Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Molly Hendrickson with the latest from Denver 7. Parks and wildlife rangers want us to be extra safe when hiking out on the trails right now. On Sunday, a lightning strike hit eight climbers near the popular Devil's Head Fire Lookout in Douglas County. Right now, we're learning more about the victims and the rescue effort to get them safely off the trail. Denver 7's Micah Smith has more on this massive rescue. The Locksmore Fire Department tells us the eight hikers were near Devil's Head Lookout at the summit around three in the afternoon on Sunday. That's when the hikers say lightning struck a rock wall near them. They say the blast was so violent it threw them to the ground. Seven of the hikers were able to walk out of the trail area. They were treated for minor injuries and some of the patients complained about a tingling sensation. But the eighth victim, an adult woman, was seriously hurt and had to be carried down from the trail on a stretcher. It took 30 people from multiple multiple agencies to get her down. At last check, she was in critical condition. Many members of the group consider themselves lucky because according to a National Lightning Council study published in March, two thirds of people killed by lightning between 2006 and 2018 were enjoying outdoor activities. Now, the National Weather Service says no one was killed by lightning in Colorado in 2018, but there were two deaths in 2017 and two in 2016. Again, all of these happened while the victims were enjoying outdoor activities. So as we prepare for afternoon storms this week, if you find yourself caught in a lightning storm, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration has a few tips for you. They say try to get inside as soon as possible. If you can't get low to the ground and if your car happens to be nearby, jump inside because a car is better shelter than none at all. Reporting in Lakewood, Micah Smith, Denver 7. All right, Micah, thank you. And with temperatures rising and snow melt rushing down into our waterways, treacherous conditions remain. At least three people have been swept away in just three days. This is new video of search and rescue crews on the Poudre River Sunday searching for 57-year-old David Smith. He went missing while rafting. Crews used drones to look for him, but have since called off any large-scale searches until any leads develop. Right now, South Metro firefighters are working to determine what caused a garage fire Sunday night. It happened along Christensen Drive in unincorporated Arapahoe County near the Columbine Heights neighborhood. Six people were in the home when that fire started in the garage and then spread to the front porch. Thankfully, all of them were able to get out with no injuries. Starting Monday, you'll no longer be allowed to vape indoors and in most public places. This is part of the Colorado Clean Indoor Air Act. The change comes as new numbers show Colorado high school students vape twice as much as the national average. Studies show stronger smoke-free policies lower the chances young people will start smoking. Monday marks six months until the so-called red flag bill becomes law in Colorado. Under the law, judges will be able to temporarily remove firearms from people believed to be at high risk of harming themselves or others. One of the bill's sponsors says the law will be good for the state. In six months from now, the state of Colorado, I am assured we will start saving lives in this state as opposed to standing by and watching more lives be taken. The Rocky Mountain gun owners and several House Republicans have sued over the law. However, they're not challenging the law itself, but rather the way it was passed. A Castle Pines man has admitted to killing a mother bear in his neighborhood. Wildlife officials say they're still investigating, but it appears no laws were broken. We first brought you this story on Friday after the bear's two orphan cubs were seen wandering a neighbor's front yard. That man who killed the bear says he did it in self-defense because the bear tried getting into his home. It is legal to kill a bear to protect yourself if you feel threatened. Right now, wildlife officials are focusing on the cubs who were taken to a wild wildlife rehabilitation facility in southwest Colorado. The goal for those cubs down there will be to get them to the point where they can survive their first winter hibernation and then release them back into the wild. A neighbor had offered $2,500 for information on who killed the bear, but he tells us now he's donating that money to the rehabilitation center. As we get closer to the 4th of July holiday, a reminder that several cities in the metro have fireworks bans in place. And with the wildfire risk this summer, several cities have chosen to cancel their shows altogether. We're going 360 on the bans on Denver 7 News at 6 Monday night. But in the meantime, we've compiled a complete list of fireworks shows happening across the state. You can find that information on the DenverChannel.com. And two of those fireworks shows will be on Tuesday and Wednesday nights at Coors Field. And speaking of Coors Field, a young Rockies fan 
Brooklyn was treated to Sunday's game as a positive end to a now viral story. It is hard to forget this Lakewood brawl that broke out at a youth baseball game a couple weeks ago. It allegedly started because of a call made by a 13 year old umpire. Well, that 13 year old was Josh Cordova. And after seeing the story, Major League umpire Chris Guccione invited Cordova and his family to be his guests at the game. Very grateful for all the support. A lot of people, you know, supported me through this time, and a few parents did, yeah. But I'm very appreciative for everyone that's reached out to me. And he got to take part in all the pregame festivities. He got to take part in the opening lineup exchange, attend the umpire meeting, even got a brand new chest protector. Mm. He says he definitely wants to keep umpiring and hopes to one day do the job in the majors. Nice to see kind of a happy ending yes. to an awful story. Well, if you're heading out on a road trip for the 4th of July, one thing you definitely want to have on hand is entertainment for the kiddos. And there are a lot of options that don't include screens. Denver 7's Nicole Brady has more on some of the top rated travel toys. Whether it's a 12 hour trip to the Grand Canyon or even a three hour plane ride, it can be daunting with kids. We had the New York based Toy Insider in our studio and the first question I asked is what makes a good travel toy? All the best travel toys are either small, easy to uh, pack flat, easy to stick in a bag, and that's really what you're looking for for a good travel toy. So those unboxing style toys are very popular right now and this summer you can get them in travel sized versions like the boxy girls minis or the boxy pets. As for flat easy to pack toys the Toy Insider recommends color forms restickable sticker books. Then another trend we're seeing are the classic road trip games now being made into actual games like the I Spy card game. It's great because kids can use those cards as a one player game to challenge themselves or they can read them aloud and play with the people they're traveling with. And for older kids, these mini arcade games in a handheld version are tapping into the popular trend of retro games coming back into style. And in case you don't want to hear that sound for 12 hours or on a plane, you can turn that sound off. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. Yeah, that might be a little annoying. <laughs> yeah. It started with a simple request. A grandson wanted to help his grandfather celebrate his 100th birthday by asking for birthday cards. And since our story aired last week, the response was overwhelming. Frank Cunningham was surprised on Friday with more than 1,700 birthday cards. They came from nearly all of the 50 states and multiple countries, including Japan. Birthday card we got? Almost 2,000. Oh my God. 2,000. 2,000. Just for you. Just for you. 2,000 people thinking about you on your birthday. Yeah. You're a pretty special guy, you know that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> as long as you know it. Yeah. As long as you know it. And you remember, they had just asked for 100 birthday cards. Right. So they got that times a lot. Frank joked it was going to take a while for him to read all those cards, but he plans on reading every single one. Mine would have a question. How do you live to be 100? Yes, yeah. <laughs> good question. Katie LaSalle has a look at the rain headed our way. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Happy 1st of July. It's starting off to be a partly cloudy and dry day across the metro area, but we do have the chance for showers and storms developing through the afternoon and evening evening could be seeing some very strong storms, especially across eastern Colorado and then drier weather will return Wednesday through the end of the week. So right now the 4th of July holiday looking OK in terms of uh, any wet weather that will move through through the late afternoon. But for today, 84 degrees are expected high in Denver, not nearly as hot as over the weekend. We're back in the 80s across the plains, low 90s out through places like Burlington, upper 70s, low 80s into the high country. Risk of severe weather, mainly over the far eastern plains of Colorado from Burlington up through places like Julesburg, but still across the metro area and mainly east are going to be seeing some uh, strong cells develop later on this afternoon. The biggest threats will be light to moderate rainfall, could be seeing some small hail and very gusty winds. For Tuesday, I have 87 degrees, a few storms likely through the afternoon. Today will be the wettest day of the week, it looks like. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, still the chance of storms in our high country, but our temperatures here around the Denver area will warm to the upper 80s to near 90 degrees, and then a bit of a cool down as we head into next weekend. All right, thank you, Katie, and thank you for watching this Denver 7 Now update. Make sure you check back here later today for another update and download the free Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.